He's getting older. Champagne room! Oh, hit the full button! But not wiser. <laughs> this is the Lefty Show. Yeah, welcome to the Lefty Show, episode number seven. I thank you all for joining me here today. Today's date is the 7th of May, Siete de Mayo. Little known holiday outside. You know, Cinco de Mayo gets all the love. It does. Everybody's, oh, Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo, let's get hammered. No, man, Siete de Mayo is where it's at. You know, you guys can have your fun celebrating Cinco de Mayo. I'm going to be over here kicking it on Siete de Mayo, chilling out, maxing, perhaps, perhaps, though not definitively, relaxing all cool. Maybe a little b-ball outside of the school. Haven't decided yet. I gotta warm up. Hit my mid-range J. Get my mid-range... My mid-range game is on point. So sad to see the death of the mid-range game in the NBA. There's nothing like a crisp jump shot from, you know, about 15 feet away. It's great to see it, but because the NCAA, for some reason, decide... Excuse me, decides to to not move back the three-point line to NBA standards because they've got to be different somehow. Because despite the fact that every NCAA sport, every collegiate sport that has a professional equivalent, a popular professional equivalent, whether it be hockey, whether it be baseball, soccer, football, American football, gridiron, which is actually pretty cool. I know a lot of people, you mean football. No, I mean American football. The ball's a foot long. Uh, hand egg. <laughs> the ball's a foot long. That's why it's called a football. But gridiron is gridiron is the only one that I that I will look at and be like, eh, you know what? I like that. I like it. Baseball. I don't know if I said that already. All those sports, from the collegiate level to the professional level, are played on the professional sized field. All the dimensions of the field are the same. Hockey may be a little bit different because I know there's some there's some subtle differences. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll get to that in a bit. Subtle differences between an NHL sized rink and the an international sized rink and you know international rules or global rules, whatever. So there there may be a, some subtle differences there. However, it's not so big as a foot and a half or a couple feet of difference between the three-point line, which results in not many people taking mid-range jumpers or not knowing how to take mid-range jumpers when they get to the NBA, because in college, those would be three-pointers, and those players are discouraged from taking threes. But when you get to the NBA, that's a mid-range jump shot. You got to hit that if you're going to be a scorer. If you want to be productive in the NBA... You've got to be able to knock it down from mid-range. Yeah, you don't have to. There's plenty of players who are who are very productive that, that don't do that. But if you want to be a if you want to be a top guy, you got to start there. You you've got to. But the NCAA being stubborn, like, we're the NCAA. We're different. We're just just make it the NBA size, man. Fuck, make it international. Who cares? Give us the trapezoidal paint. I kind of like that. It looks cool. You know, there's the rectangle, the straight rectangle paint. Which, uh, meh. But international basketball with that trapezoidal paint, that's cool, man. I like it. I've been coughing a lot because, you know, I, I, I had originally pegged whatever I'm dealing with right now as sinuses, as, as allergies. And I'm not so sure anymore that that's the case because it's, it went from, you know, a little bit of achiness and no fever but something in my nose to it was, you know, going into my ears to now today is apparently like today is the equivalent of a clearance sale of a, like a liquidator sale. Like everything must go get your mucus nine ninety nine or your cents on the dollar. Everything must go. We lost a lawsuit or something and blah, 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 blah. We got to sell last year's stock and all mucus today. Come and get it. And it's just it's awful. So if I take a few breaks, if I just go quiet for a bit. I apologize. This is a one-man show. 
but I've got to sne- I you know I don't want to be blowing my nose into the microphone when it's on, and I don't want to be coughing into the microphone, and you know now it's <coughs> excuse me, now it's gone to it's in my something is in my chest. I'm I've taken Mucinex. Katie forced Mucinex on me, and so now I might be coughing a little bit. And so I think it might be, I had a cold about two weeks ago, and then Katie got sick a little bit. Not as sick as I was, but she was having cold-like symptoms. And this may be the the bug that I had two weeks ago knocked down by mine and Katie's immune systems, respectively. So hopefully it goes away soon, taking vitamin C, drinking orange juice, all that. But hey... The, the show must go on, right? The lefty show will not be bogged down by histamines. It will not be bogged down by some kind of virus or anything like that. I don't know. I'm getting an asshole-eating flesh virus or something like that. I, I may take a show off or two. Maybe you'll grant me that, that I can take a show off or two if I've got some asshole-eating virus. Maybe that, but outside of that, nothing much. And speaking of Katie, Katie's going to be joining me in, uh, in the second half of the show, we're going to be talking, cracking, cracking jokes, riffing, as it were. So you've got that to look forward to. I don't know how long the show is going to be. I don't strive for a set time. I just kind of look and say, oh, man, you know, an hour is, is, is probably my upper limit. I try to, when I'm, once I'm at an hour, I say, hey, you know what? Time to probably wrap up the show. And 30 minutes is probably, again, the lower limit where it's like, okay, got to hit it. Gotta hit it if this is going to be a show. 20 minutes, it just, it doesn't seem like it would be worthwhile to me. So Katie's going to be joining us later, and hopefully for some uh, for some good, fun old times. Ugh, thank you. Sorry. Thank you to everybody that's, um, ugh. Thank you to everybody that's been supporting the show. Everybody that's been watching, liking, and, and favoriting. Is that even a thing anymore on YouTube? Can you even favorite videos? I don't even know. I think they took it away. I think they just ninja'd it, ninja'd it out. It was just like, oh, yep, now it's gone. Fuck you. But thank you to everybody that's been watching on YouTube, liking. I appreciate it very much. And this episode is brought to you by imraising.com. This is not really brought to us by imraising.com, but I like to give them a shout out because they're nice people over there. imraising.com. You got something you want to crowdfund? You can go over there and check it out. And if you want to help out the lefty show, as as many people have, I'm thankful to each and every one of you for uh, for helping me out. You can head on over to imraising.com slash 643 productions. That's imraising.com forward slash 643 productions. And you can donate there. And you can add a personal uh, a personal message. Maybe I, maybe I could read them on the show. Maybe that could be a thing. I don't know. Don't be lewd in your messages. Don't be a dick. But if you want to, something inspirational or you want to say something what you think is funny, again, but don't be a dick about it, maybe we could do something like that. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. If you want to help out the show, equipment costs, studio upkeep, and all those kinds of things, new equipment, New board, microphone, kind of, this microphone's almost two years old now. More than two years old, I think. It's been a while. Long ass time this microphone's been in service here. Rode Procaster. And uh, the uh, new board is probably on the table. This one's USB 1.1. 1.1, people! Come on! This is ridiculous. It's my own damn fault, but dang nabbit. USB 1.1. And, uh, and, of course, hosting costs to get the show on iTunes. So you can take the lefty show wherever you go. I had an idea about that. Let me run this by you after I try to surreptitiously blow my nose as quickly as I can. I had an idea about hosting the show. And I've got, I've got a Podbean thing set up for That's Not Why You Called. My idea is, is that I, if I upgrade to this, I don't know, whatever it is, 60 bucks a month, whatever it is, not the top top that they offer, not the tippy top, but I can create multiple RSS feeds if I upgrade just one tier. And while I will still only have one and a half gigabytes of total upload a month, that will probably mean about 750 megabytes for the lefty show, maybe as much as a gigabyte. For the lefty show. Now, what I can do 
is I can host both That's Not Why You Called in the Lefty Show with one and a half gigabytes a month. And it rolls over, of course. But I can start uploading the Lefty Show daily to, to, to Podbean, to create the RSS feed, and you can find it on iTunes. However, when I start reaching the upper limit monthly and I'm uploading That's Not Why You Called as well, I'll start removing old older episodes of the lefty show from the rss feed it'll be like a carousel like a revolving door of awesome awesome audio entertainment for you and that's something that would allow me to not have to spend 160 fucking dollars a month to host this son of a bitch and chiz you know again chiz of course link me to you you can you can rent your own server but that's just that's that's farther down the road that's when we're in pka territory on a on a daily podcast, that's when we get into okay. Well, let's start. You know, once there's once there's sponsors actually knocking down the door, and I don't have to make shit up, like I'm raising dot com sponsoring an episode, sponsoring the show. But uh, but they do sponsor a show in the way because they provide a service that allows you to go help out the show, make a donation if you want. Greatly appreciate it. I'm raising dot com forward slash six four three productions is where it's at. Or Samsung with their tablets. I like the tablet. I like the product, but they're, you know, they're not sponsoring a damn episode. So that's something that that might be. That's I think that's that's probably better than going out on a on that much of a limb because one hundred and sixty dollars a month, despite the quarter million dollars a week we get for PKA sponsorships, one hundred and sixty dollars a month is still a commitment. It's still a gamble. Because this show is not generating, not probably not going to be generating $160 a month, not counting donations. Because donations are a variable, and I, and I choose not to count on them. And not that you guys are not countonable, but just, they're a variable. <coughs> so, when the show gets to that level, we can revisit it. But as of right now, I think the, the best thing is a, is a revolving carousel, a... A, a lazy Susan, if you will, of podcasting entertainment hosted on Podbean. So that's that's what we're looking forward to uh, today. Now, speaking of things that I'm looking forward to, or not looking forward to in that in that regard, I got to make a Sam's Club trip today. I just got to do it. I was going to do it yesterday, but it, it just didn't happen. I just I was getting ready to go. I just didn't feel it. But today, it's just it's got to happen. There's things that I need, and Sam's Club's got them. At a reasonable price, any more coffee for the for the K cup machine and all that stuff. So I gotta go, but I'm not looking forward to going to Sam's Club. Not because I don't like the place. I like the place. I like going there. At least I don't hate it. You know they got a selection of stuff, and I peruse, I browse. They got all kinds of shit. I look at the TVs, I look at the cameras, I look at the tablets, the phones, the clothes. Yes, the clothes. What of the clothes, man? The books, if they've got a if they've got an interesting book, I'll check that out. All their stuff, their wide selection of, of goods. I'll check them all out. So it's not going to the store that, that, that I'm not looking forward to. Dread is the wrong word. I was going to say dreading there. It's not the right word. But what I'm not looking forward to is leaving the store. Because if you don't know, Sam's Club, for people outside the, the U.S., or maybe it's, it's just not in your area, it's like a Costco. It's like a big box store. Everything there is in bulk. There's no such thing as going to Sam's Club for a toothbrush. I did that the other week. I was like, I need a toothbrush. I'm at Sam's Club. Let's go get myself a toothbrush. They've got to have toothbrushes, right? Well, they do, but they're in packs of 15 or something like that. And I, I, I don't need fucking 15 toothbrushes. I don't. I'm probably, I probably will not use 15 toothbrushes for the rest of my goddamn life. Probably won't, but he, but it's either I get the 15 toothbrushes here or I've got to go to another store. So fuck it. I bought the 15 toothbrushes or whatever it is, 8, 9, 10. So that's the kind of store it is. There's no such thing. Everything's in two packs. You want Listerine? You want mouthwash? Well, they got the big ass things of Listerine. They got them, but they're two packs. You're getting two of the motherfuckers. You want, I, I have a, a meal supplement that I use. That uh, it's by EAS. It's a carb advantage or something like that. And usually they're sold in packs of four in most grocery stores. Maybe maybe six packs, sixers 
in in pla- at places like GNC. But usually in packs of four in most grocery stores. No, 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 not at Sam's Club. Boxes of twenty four. You get a you could get almost a month's supply of EAS Advantage, whatever it is, for about I think it's like twenty seven bucks. Which blows the prices out of the water. It's the idea of buying in bulk. That's as close as you're going to get, probably, as just a some consumer, as Joe Schmo, to actually buying in bulk and saving money because of it. Sam's Club, Costco, big, big box stores like that, close as you're going to get. And one thing they don't do, like most grocery stores, is they don't provide bags or boxes. They used to provide boxes, I believe, for you to put your shit in when you're going out the door. They don't anymore, or at least they're harder to find. Most grocery stores, they provide bags, plastic bags, paper bags, whatever. So you can put your shit in and carry it out. (coughs) Excuse me, carry it out to your car. Sam's Club doesn't do that because we're cutting down all the overhead prices. I I believe that's the business model. We're cutting down all the overhead prices. Fuck it. Just we're selling big shit anyway. You can carry it yourself. You know, it's not like you're trying to carry raspberries or something like individual raspberries or bananas. No, you're you're carrying a, a whole fucking thing. You're you're carrying a banana plant. That, that, that's what you're buying. That's what you're carrying out of the store when you go to Sam's Club. So they don't have anything like that. And it would be easy then, because it's easy to tell. I've worked in a grocery store. It's easy to tell, kind of tell, who's stealing and who's not. Because odds are, if your if your groceries are in a bag as you leave the store, you didn't get that. You didn't bring that bag from home. You didn't surreptitiously grab a fistful of plastic bags and go into the back and put your groceries in the bags and then are trying to walk out with it without paying. Chances are that you've either gone to self-checkout or I, well, I was, I was, I was before the the time of self-checkout. You, you had gone to a checker and you, somebody had bagged your groceries for you. So if you're walking out with things in a bag, whether it be plastic or paper or whatever, it's easy to look at that for the floor manager or anybody else to say, oh, they're probably not shoplifting. Loss prevention is the hallmark of retail. That's what those guys in the yellow shirts at Best Buy are. They're loss prevention. And they're the guys with the keys to get you free shit. So if you know somebody who's L- who works LP at a Best Buy, you make friends with that person. You buy that person a beer if they're of legal age. Because those are the kinds of guys that if they want to could probably get you a ton of free shit. So loss prevention, hallmark of retail, especially grocery stores, grocery stores and and electronics retail. And when things are bagged, it's easier to tell. But in Sam's Club, because they're they're not, it's harder to tell who may or may not be shoplifting. It is. And so what they've done, they've begun the practice. Best Buy does this too. Costco does it. Sam's Club does it. I'm not sure of anybody else. Maybe Walmart here in America is... They began posting workers and the exit side, the exit doors. They they post workers and they stop you or try to stop you. Because, you know, we'll get to that. They try to stop you and check your receipt to make sure. You know, all right, itemized list, whatever. And I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not like it's. Sometimes it gets unreasonable. So there, there are certain times where the stopping of people becomes unreasonable. If it's a, if it's a high density, if it's a high traffic hour, and there's 15 people leaving the store, there's only one guy checking receipts, maybe two. So you're waiting in line to leave a store, and I'm not waiting in line to leave a store. That's just no. I'll wait in line to get into a store because odds are they have things that a lot of people want. I understand that, but I am not waiting in line to leave a goddamn store. That's just, no, that defies logic and reason, not waiting in line. So if if the little receipt checkers are taking too long and looking at trying to itemize everything, you see it on the receipt, you try to identify it in the cart, I'm just blowing by. No, fuck you. And I know that a lot of people dislike that idea. A lot of people have an issue with that. But here's my point. I am not obligated to stop. In any in any sense, line or not, line to get out of the store or not, I am not obligated to stop and show these people my receipt. 
showing showing this dullard working the door my receipt was not part of the deal I made with Sam's Club at the register. It's not. I was not notified of that stipulation to our contract. And buying things at a store at a register with cash is a contract. Uh, that, that stipulation was not part of the contract, was not part of the offer. It was not part of the consideration. Thus, it was not a party to the contract. And I'm, I'm not obligated. When I stop... It is because I'm just, you know, they probably get shit if I don't stop. And I might get shit. Because how dare you not stop? You must be stealing things. You don't want to submit to somebody looking at your shit? Well, then you must be stealing. Blah. What's wrong with you? So when I try, I stop as often as I as I am willing to. Because if it's just if it's just me, and I know the person because I've been there a few times, and I know they just look... And then swipe their little highlighter. All right, I'll give them that. But when I'm stopped and standing there, and somebody is going through the... If I've spent hundreds of dollars buying shit from your store, and I have to wait while somebody goes through each and every item and looks through my cart, I have a problem. Because I'm, I'm not obligated to do it in the first place. And here you are holding me up from leaving your store. My receipt... The receipt that is being held in the hands of the person with the highlighter is the very thing that proves that my transaction is legitimate and that these are my things now. And you are halting me to look at my things. Because if, if, if you want to say, well, you should just stop anyway because it's their store. Well, then, then I have to ask, when do those things become my things? I mean, I paid at the register. I paid. Those good, I, I was under the assumption that the issuance of the receipt, they offered the goods, I accepted, and I paid, and they gave me the receipt. I was under the impression that that made those things now mine. But if I'm still liable to, uh, or obligated to, to do what they say, then who really owns anything anymore? Do you really own anything? If you're walking, uh, you pay $300 for groceries at Sam's Club, which isn't that hard, by the way. And you're walking out of the damn store and they stop you. And, and if you try to make their, well, you have to. No, these are my things. And the other big thing I have is that a lot of these people are touchy. And this is just, this is just a, <coughs> excuse me, this is just a, a personal thing. They're my things. I'm operating under the assumption that these are my things. And these are, not only are these my things, these are my groceries. These are things that I'm going to use on myself. I'm going to drink them. I'm going to cook them and eat them. Or I'm going to rub them on my body. Or I'm going to brush my teeth with them. Or anything else. I'm going to wear them. Whatever. These are my personal items. These are, this is not a tablet that I bought at Best Buy. right? The tablet that I have right here. That's what I might do. I might pour some sugar on my damn self. Pour some sugar on your damn self. That's what I might do. I might take this sugar that I'm buying and pour it on myself. I don't want you touching things, you, the person at the door, touching things that are now mine. They're my things. Leave them alone. I don't know you. Why do you insist on touching my food and, and other things and my personal items? Stop touching them. And I haven't made too big of a stink about this, but I have requested. I said, please don't touch my things to one lady. And she continued to touch them. She didn't speak English very well. And she continued to touch my groceries, my food. And then I looked at her. I looked at, you know, I don't know, maybe I've got a death stare, but I said, please stop touching my fucking things. And then in broken English, we have to, we have to. I said, no, these are my things. Stop touching them. And that's why I'm dreading. Again, not dreading, but just I'm, I don't. And, and despite what many people think, I don't lust for conflict. I don't. I, I, I don't want to be in conflict with somebody. I don't. I am not the kind of person that my default setting is to strive on conflict. 
to live, to feed off of conflict. That's not the kind of person I, you have to work really hard. There has to be a whole system in place to get me to a point where I am feeding off of conflict. Where I'm just guns blazing, middle fingers up, bring it on, motherfuckers! You have to get, that's really hard to get me to that point. My default setting is, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to, just, I I, I don't want to get in an argument with the manager. I don't want to do anything like that. I don't want to have to try to explain all these things. But I will if I am have to, perfect case in point, when I bought my glasses. And the buy one, get one free. And the glasses, the single pair of glasses, before I was given a free pair, were priced out at about $600. No, no, actually, probably about $550 with tax. $550 for a single pair of glasses. <coughs> and I, I said, well, I don't think I can pay that. I mean, I can't pay it right now. And VisionWorks, the lady working at VisionWorks, immediately said, oh, okay, boop, boop, punched up a few keys, 50% off. Now, all of a sudden, the glasses are $250, 270 with tax, whatever. Hmm. Is it really buy one, get one free then? If I say, uh, if I scoff at the price, now keep in mind, I still didn't get a second. Once they took off about half of the price, all of a sudden, it ceased being buy one, get one free. Hmm. Now, I didn't really want to go in and try to get a free pair of glasses. I didn't. I didn't want to make a stink. I didn't want to go in there, fuck you, fuck this, you blah, 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 blah. I didn't want to do it. Now, I could have just gone and picked up my glasses a day later and just said nothing. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm very happy with the glasses, by the way, Vision Works. If anybody representing Vision Works is listening, very happy with the glasses. But I tried, I... I tried very hard to not be caustic about it, to not be confrontational. But I sat down with the manager of the store and I and I, I laid out the thing and I said, look, here's the deal. Blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And I laid it all out and she just didn't get it. Just didn't, well, what's wrong with you? You don't, you don't understand. And at that point, I just, I'm never buying anything from here again. This is just ridiculous. Now I didn't I didn't strive off of that. I didn't I didn't feed off of it. I wasn't looking for it, but I felt as though I had been trodden upon. I was being treated like a fool. And similarly, when it is not it is not a stipulation of our simple contract Sam's Club that I have to stop and show this idiot my receipt. I'm not going to if I don't feel like it. And more so than that, don't touch my goddamn things. Just don't touch them. So I'm going to try not to get into a fight at Sam's Club and, and possibly have my, my membership revoked. Because, because again, it's always, it always, eventually, I'm sure it will happen in this video, it will turn into, well, what's wrong with you? If you're not stealing anything, what's the big deal with stopping and letting them letting them look at your receipt? Now again, this isn't the government, it's fucking Sam's Club. What's the what's what's the problem with that? If you've got if if, if you're not a terrorist bomber, what's the problem with taking off your belt, your shoes, your fucking fillings, your wristwatch, everything, having your balls felt up at the airport? What's wrong with you? Why uh and, and I just, is there any room anymore for just, I don't want to do these things. I don't, first of all, I don't, I'm not legally obligated to do these things. And second of all, I just don't want to. Why am I the bad guy? Why am I an asshole? Why am I the jerk? Because I don't want to do things. Or in the sense of Katie, why am I the embarrassment? Because I just don't want to do things. I just, I don't. I don't want to show you my receipt. I don't want to take my belt off because I don't have to. And it's ridiculous that we've gotten to a point where people who say, excuse me, do I really have to do this? Like the teen I talked about in, in last week's Lefty show. The, teen, the Alabama teenager who said, excuse me, I don't really feel like I should be taking these bullshit tests, whatever they are, to try to get you more money or, or these things that don't make any sense. I'm not taking them. And, and the school board looked at her, the administrators looked at her and said, well, what's wrong with you? 
you're in trouble now. Because how dare you question what everybody else does? How dare you not want to do these things that you're not obligated to do? It's ridiculous. We'll jump into a new, little bit of news today. This is from Union, South Carolina. The title of this, this is MSN.com. <coughs> Excuse me. South Carolina couple who killed sex offender act out in court. Union, South Carolina. This is from the AP. A couple who carried out a plan to kill a registered sex, of, sex offender and his wife showed little remorse when they were sentenced to life in prison Tuesday, with one shouting, that's what child molesters get. Initially, uh, Jeremy and Christine Moody apologized to the judge and asked for a 30-year sentence so they could see their children and grow old together. But after Union County Judge Lee Alford uh, handed down the, uh, the maximum punishment, they shared a brief kiss and then showed how they really felt. See you perverts later, Jeremy Moody shouted at Charles Parker's family as he walked out of court. That's what child molesters get. And as Christine Moody walked in shackles to a police car outside of the courthouse, she told reporters, killing that pedophile was the best day of my life. The Moody's went to church the day they killed Parker, 59, and his 51-year-old wife, Gretchen. While there, they decided to put into motion plans to kill the mechanic and anyone else in his home. They drove their car to his house and popped the hood like they were having car trouble. When Parker came out to help, Jeremy Moody pulled a gun and ordered, ordered him inside, Prosecutor Kevin Brackett said. The couple then told Parker and his wife exactly what they were going, uh, exactly why they were going to kill them, Brackett said. Jeremy Moody, 31, shot the couple, then his 37-year-old wife stabbed them. A surveillance camera on Parker's land caught them leaving, and deputies recognized Jeremy Moody from the word skinhead tattooed around on his neck and the Made in America tattoo on the side of his head. Both were convicted of murder, kidnapping, and first-degree burgl- burglary. Bur- burglary? Yes, burglary. The R is before the G. <coughs> now, it's, it's good to see that these, these obviously deranged people... I, I mean, you've got to be a little bit fucked up if you sit in a tattoos artist's chair and say, I want skinhead tattooed, and there's a picture of him on this uh, standing in court on, on the MSN website. Then you want skinhead tattooed across your your throat. You, there, there's a little something messed up about you. I mean, I give you points. I'll give you points for being forthright about it and just saying, yeah, I'm out front. The fir- one of the first things you're going to see about me when you meet me, Jeremy Moody. I, Jeremy Moody, will tell you, I, I'm not even going to tell you, the ink on my throat will tell you I am a skinhead. Hi. How's it going? You got to give a guy points for that. He just says, yep, I'm a skinhead. Let's, let's, let's do whatever. And the Made in America, just in case you were fucking confused about that whole thing. Made in America. I'd be more surprised if it was made in Canada. I wonder if that would be, I don't know, maybe some kind of, some kind of, some kind of hate crime or something. But here's the deal. Here's my, my problem with this whole thing. We're going to get Katie to to join me in the studio. Here's my problem with all this. That it's not an issue of of these psychos killing this person, killing this child molester, or his wife who is presumably innocent. The problem is, is that these psychos, Jeremy and Christine Moody, probably knew that this guy was a child molester because he was a registered sex offender and because they can look him up in databases. And I have, this is not a very, this is not a, I don't know exactly how to put this, but it seems wrong to me that you're arrested on a crime, convicted of a crime, and put in, whatever your punishment is for that crime at the time community service, probation, whatever it is, jail time, prison time, Katie's joining us, whatever it is, my problem is that you're not really ever done serving your crime when you commit a crime that is sexual in nature. Even if if the crime is as simple as my girlfriend, who happened to be 17 at the time, sent me a lewd text message and now I'm a sex offender for the rest of my life. My girlfriend at the time 
who was 17, I was 18 or 19, we, we had sex. And now I'm a rapist. And for the rest of my life, not only am I going to be put in jail or have, these, or have to do some kind of time or be put out in any way because of this arrest and this charge, but for the rest of my life, everybody is going to is going I am going to actively have to tell people that I committed a, a sex crime. And will it matter to them? Once you say, once somebody says to you, I committed a sex crime, does it really fucking matter what they say afterwards? If you don't know the person and you have no vesting interest in them, once they say, I'm a sex offender, do you does it really fucking matter what the facts of the case are? Does it really fucking matter what really happened to you at that point? No. For the rest of the time you know that person, in whatever capacity, your initial thought is sex offender. And they have to go through and ask for permission to move into a neighborhood. And they have to go and tell people when they move into a neighborhood, I am a sex offender, just so you know. They have to register with a database. And they're put on maps all over the internet. And they are questioned immediately upon the commission of any crime in the area. They go, the police automatically go to sex offenders. And start questioning them, detaining them, and asking them. And what? That's justice? That is justice. And, of course, then you've got psychos like these moody assholes who will fucking kill you because they're crazy. And for the rest of your life, in every database in America, you are a criminal. Not, because it matters not that you did your time and you're out now. The only thing that matters is you are a sex offender. You are a sex criminal. That's a good song. Michael Jackson could do that. But that's what you... And, and that's a, I have a problem with that. Because now it's no longer about rehabilitation. It's no longer about do your time for the crime. Because if your crime is in any way sexual, and you, you're the unlucky bastard who gets charged with a sex crime, no matter the facts, there's a, there's a likelihood that you are going to be a sex offender for life. For life. And everybody is going to be privy to that knowledge. And everybody is going to judge you for it. And everybody is going to put you down in their own special way because of that and not give you the benefit of the doubt. And there's not a goddamn thing you can do about it because I don't even know why. I don't even get the logic behind telling people. What is, sex offender buys a piece of property. I don't want to move into that. I'm, I'm, I'm a rich sex offender, and I buy a piece of land, and I build a nice house on it, and I want to move in there, but I have to get everybody else's permission? And even then, fuck that. If that's not how it actually is, and it's just you've got to tell everybody. Okay, well, I'm a sex offender. What are, what are the parents going to do? Don't go over to that man's house whom you don't know shouldn't that kind of be something you tell your kids regardless shouldn't that kind of be something you know if this guy comes up and offers you candy don't get into his van if he starts taking out his penis run away shouldn't that be like parenting 101 but no i've got to be told because ugh, I, it's got to be on a map and registered so that i can make sure that this person isn't committing a sexual crime the, however devious the crime is, however devious sexual crimes can be, that's why we have fucking jail. That's why we have punishments in the form of penitentiaries. That's why we have those things. If your crime is especially devious, that, that shouldn't mean that you are paying for that crime for the rest of your life if you are not sentenced to life in prison. You do your time, you're out. Second chance. You're done. You're rehabilitated. That's the whole idea. But for some reason, sex offenders and even people who are wrongfully accused and wrongfully convicted of sex crimes are now for the rest of their life at a supreme disadvantage and, and possible fodder for psychos, psychotic fucking assholes like Jeremy and Christine Moody. This, this, this goes right up there with mandatory minimums. Mandatory minimum. What, what are we doing with mandatory minimums? What does that serve? Why take, the, why take 
the power out of the judge's hands. You're putting the power, the, the fact that we have, that's the whole idea. You trust them. But when you create sex offenders lists and you create mandatory minimums, you're taking power out of their hands. You're saying, no, 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 we don't trust you that much. And I think that's wrong. Katie, Katie is joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Katie. Hello. Can you speak again? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm, all, I'm all phlegmy. I'm all phlegmy too. You got me sick. Is what you did. <laughs> no, you got me sick and I got you I did not. Well, you, right. You, I got you sick and then you got me re-sick. So you still got me sick. You did. Via you. Yeah. So blame's on you, not me. So Katie gave me Mucinex. You forced it on me. Yeah, I, I which shoved is it now, down your throat. Well, so. no, I mean, you know, I trust you in your in your medical, whatever you talk about, mm -hmm. medicinally. Okay. Here, I'm going to turn a little bit so that we can. Let me, uh, let me turn you up a bit. Just to make sure that you are sounding okay. I'm sure I sound fine. Audio mixing, it's, it's, you know, when you're not dealing with the same microphones, you're dealing with different voices, it's, uh, it's kind of tough. It's, uh, it's actually kind of tough to, to get it just right. So, so Katie, yes. this is episode, by the way, this episode is brought to you by imraising.com. You got a crowd, it's not really brought to you by them, but if you want to go to <laughs> imraising.com slash 643 productions, imraising.com forward slash 643 productions, you want to help out and donate for uh, studio improvements, you want to help out, you know, we need new microphones. We've got to get us on iTunes, hosting costs, kind of expensive. Got a plan for that to keep it reasonable. But it does get expensive, especially hosting two podcasts, and uh, any help is appreciated. So head on over to imraising.com forward slash 643 productions. Send me something funny as, a, as an optional comment, and maybe we'll get into, you'll appear on the Lefty Show. Maybe that's something we can do. Maybe, maybe a new tablet for some reason. Katie, would you be mad at me if I got a better tablet? Not now, but you were going to get mad at me if I got if I had gotten a better tablet than what you have. Yeah. Why? Because that was my birthday present. And you were just like, yep, I'm going to buy you one, but then I'm going to buy myself a better one. I just kind of like... <coughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, you need some tissues. I, I do, no, 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 get the, get the paper towels because those things... Apparently, we can send men to the moon. And when the air filters in one part of the lunar module do not match the air filters in the command module, we can figure out a way to make the LEM <coughs> air filters fit with the command module filters. But we still haven't figured out a way to not have Kleenex fucking disintegrate all over your shit when you're trying to blow your nose. I've never seen that happen before. I don't know why it happened. Am I just forceful? I don't know. It's just, I, I don't, it, I don't know. I'm going to turn down my mic, but your mic is still going to be active. So you're just going to have to talk. Okay. And, uh, and hopefully, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully they don't hear the grossness too much. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. <coughs> They're probably. That's hot. Just shut up. I got it. <laughs> You did this to me. <laughs> no, no, you did you that. Did you did it to me. yourself. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, there goes all the Vicks Vapo rum. Uh, there goes all that. I don't think there was much on there, anyways. Yeah. Well, I had to blow my nose during the show previously, so. Yeah, but I don't understand why why the stuff gets all over you. It doesn't make sense. That is totally absurd. <laughs> Really? It is totally absurd. <laughs> I you this is your fault. This no, is it's not. this is definitely your fault. So getting back to the tablet. So why was why would I be a bad guy? No for, one said you would be a bad for guy. For buying you your on your birthday present, I got Katie a Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 10.1. I we just we went to Best Buy and did the damn thing. And it was mm -hmm. done. Like a month early, a month and a half early or something like that. Right. A month right, about a month and a half before your birthday. Right. Because I, I, I was sick of playing the waiting game because I thought it would be a really cool gift. And <laughs> I just took Katie to Best Buy and was like, here we go. We're going to do this. And she picked it out. And she had been, it, it turns out I had guessed right. I said, you know, you, lay in, you use your phone a lot to do things. Well, that's perfect for a tablet when you're, when you're laying in bed or something. And I figured you would get a lot of use out of it. And you have. Yeah. But I'm when. I'm actually just using it. 
And so when I get the idea to get myself a tablet, in part because I want to do something like this, I can't get one that's better than yours? No. Why not? Because that's all that's like messed up. Why is that messed up? Because it just in a way, I don't really know how to explain it, but it it just feels like you just wanted to one up me and you were just like, Yep, I'm just gonna get a better. See, one. I disagree because one upping you would be if you had bought yourself the Samsung Galaxy Tab three, and then I went out and bought myself the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro. That would be one upping. But it's still no, it's still one upping me. <laughs> I think it's even worse because you actually bought me the one which was in your control. I wasn't like I was going to be like buy me this one. You know, it's your choice. Well, I mean, <clears throat> there there was an element of choice because I, I I I didn't want to. It was good that I didn't. I was going to surreptitiously buy one that one day that we were at the mall. I was just gonna. I was gonna. I was going to do it when you were off, when you were just looking at him. I was going to tell the guy, yeah, I want one of these. And, you know, mm-hmm. and that would be a window, that would have been a Windows based tablet, which. That would have been a bad choice. Right. So you did have an element of choice. <clears throat> oh, fuck. I hate this. I can't work. God Hang damn on. you. We're both over here coughing. Like- where, this is the coughing episode. <laughs> coughing. So there was an element of choice because you got to choose between Android and, and Windows. Right. But to a certain point. Well, I mean, you know, if you wanted something that was $500, I would have bought it for you. But I'm just not paying sales tax on a $500 item. The, 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 the price of the tablet at the time was workable with tax. Mm-hmm. Because you know I like to support brick and mortar stores right. when I can. Right. But when sales tax becomes... Unre- when sales tax rivals is about to add another fifty, sixty dollars to to the price tag of the item, we gotta figure out how well, that's when how you buy stuff really off Amazon. Are. Right, I know. But Amazon doesn't get it instantly into your hands. And I wanted to see you I'm patient. No, you're not. Yeah I am. You're the impatient one when it comes to shipping stuff. Yeah. I am. You really are. What it Okay, so I have Amazon Prime. Free two day shipping on all Prime Enabled items shipped by Amazon. Once in a while, once in a while, Katie, I will pay for overnight shipping. Mm -hmm. Because it's like an extra $3. Yeah. Fuck it. (laughs) Is that, is it only like an extra $3 because you have Prime? I don't know. Or is it more expensive if you don't have Prime? (coughs) Because overnight honestly shipping is usually like twenty bucks or something. It's usually crazy. Expensive. Yeah, I've had. I, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's, it's because of an item's Prime. proximity. Maybe from where it shipped. You know, maybe the maybe the thing is that smart. I don't know. But thing. once in a while, I will I will pay for. for but mm-hmm. I, I wanted to see you. You know, because the great thing about Best Buy or buying it at a brick and mortar store is that. You get to hold it in your hands. You get to you get to do it immediately, and then you also get to go around and buy the all the accessories for it. Mm-hmm. That's one of the great parts. And so I wanted Which I to don't give even you that. Use ex- what I bought myself. Right. <laughs> she bought a, a screen protector, which sucked, and then it, it didn't suck. It just it was too. It came with some spray that you had to spray on it, and it was just a really difficult thing to put on, and it didn't really fit all that great. And it was really expensive. It was like forty bucks. It was like you forty dollars. Forty dollars for a screen protector? Yeah, it was ridiculous. That's fucking insane. And I, it's still like in the box under the bed because I, I. You just, didn't even return it? No. Oh, Jesus. I'm lazy, and I work a lot and <sighs> late, so I don't like doing that. Okay, but I want to get back. Why can I not buy? Why you could I not buy over myself? Amazon. Why'd you buy yours over Amazon? Probably because it was cheaper, right? Right, because this one was more expensive, and I didn't, I didn't know right. if, I didn't know right. if, uh, I didn't know if, uh, bu- 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 this one on Amazon it was a lot cheaper, and I didn't know if if Best Buy would have the Samsung Galaxy Tab fours because I bought it the day it was released. Right now in the Samsung store, because I actually looked, those are actually the Tab fours are cheaper than the Tab threes. No idea why. I think it's because they're on sale, because they want to sell the new ones. Damn. Yeah, it's All like right. twenty bucks cheaper. Hmm. 
So, They're but like why would why would it be bad for me to get myself a more expensive one? I still don't understand it. It just seems like because like a, a birthday present is supposed to be something that's like special. Like oh, here it is you spe- have was this. it not? So why? And then what about let me, me finish? Okay. Thank you. And does it you know, say it the was Katie special show for a does while? It, does the is yeah. this the Lefty show or the Katie yeah? But show? it's not Lefty interrupts every five seconds show. Is it? I don't think so. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> so um, oh, I lost my train of thought. <sighs> Mission accomplished. So it, it's a special thing, right? You buy someone a birthday present, and I didn't. You didn't have a tablet, <laughs> and you always have more expensive things than me. You have a much nicer PC than me. You have nicer. I would say, even though my monitor is bigger, they're nicer. Yours. Okay. I mean, it's a lot nicer and you have all this fancy stuff and I'm like, yeah, I have a tablet because you don't have one. And all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to get a tablet too. And it's going to be better than yours. So, but how does that, how does that devalue your gift? How does that make you less happy with your gift that I I never said I was less happy with my gift. I'm happy with my gift. Okay. So then it shouldn't matter what I get. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever agree on this, but we probably won't. I didn't get the better one. I got the Samsung <clears throat> You Galaxy did get the better 4. one. It still is better. Oh, so you're not happy with that? Stop it. Yours is faster, even though you say it's the same thing. No, the same thing would be if you got a tab three. Tab four is different. You know what? If it was the same exact thing, it wouldn't be named the tab four. It would still be the tab three. That's just and I like the backing of yours better. You do? Yeah. Oh, okay. You want to trade? No. Dang it. Because this one has more RAM and it's it's got all my sounds on it. it has more RAM? Cut that bitch off. Yeah, I think it's got a half a gig more. Ooh. Yours has one and a half. This has two. Okay. I believe. Which is why I can play that monster truck game. Next, I'm just going to get a better cell phone. And then... Go ahead and get a better cell phone. I'm not... I, I, you be stuck with yours. Even though you're not very good at cell phones. I'm not very good at cell phones? No. What's that supposed to be? You're not very good at the tablet. I had to put the background on it for you. Because you had no idea how to do that. And it's cool, isn't it? It's a cool background. It is cool. Yeah. All right, you know what? Since this is going to turn into just the let's dump on lefty part of the show. Go ahead and tell everybody what we discovered earlier today. You discovered it. You just pointed it out to me. You confirmed it. (laughs) You have a big gray hair right in the middle, like where you're... Do you have a widow's? No, you don't. You don't have a widow's peak. Yeah. It's like right in the middle of your forehead. No. (laughs) It's a natural thing, like... Okay, so I've got a gray hair and I've been freaking out about it. It's like, it's gray too. It's like, I can't see it right. It's like bright silver. Oh, I think I found more. What? St- fucking stop. No, now you're just fucking with me. No, get no, get no, out of here. No, 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 no. With you. I, I think they're really, I think I saw another one. Stop. You just, stop with your blasphemy right now. Come you here. just stop it. Lean this way a little bit. No, no, no. Come here. Because I don't want Come confirmation. You'll, you'll see confirmation in the mirror later. No, I, yeah. I'm going to cut those hair, rip them out by the roots. You know what I bet it is doing it? All what? that hairspray and Axe stuff. It's killing your hair. I wash and condition my hair every time I shower. You condition your hair? Yeah. Are you using my conditioner? No, there's that white bottle that oh, I got. okay. So, I condition my hair every day. I don't, I don't, I don't rinse and repeat because fuck that. Oh, I'm just kidding. And your the hairspray is fine. It's not doing anything to your hair. So, am I going gray? No. All right. I just told you my mom started like getting random gray hairs when she was like 19 or 20. And your mom doesn't have gray hair. Well, she does now. She's almost in her 60s. Oh. But she dyes it. Oh, okay. But I mean, you know, I'd take a gray streak, like a streak of gray somewhere. I'd take no. that. No. You don't think I could pull off a streak of gray? No. I could be like Polly from The no, Sopranos. No, no, no. have wings. No. Why not? No. Okay, so I'm not going gray. Nope. It's just a, a few hairs. Yep. Son of a bitch. All right, so. Well, hopefully <laughs> you're not going gray. Stop it. I, well, I don't want to guarantee it. This is what the reassurance. You have this like is the reassurance. Gray hairs? This is the reassurance phase. This should okay, be the, you're going to be fine. You'll be okay. There's I'm not a doctor. Wrong. 
I trust your medical. I told you, I but trust. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> no, but I, I still trust. I'm sure you'll be okay. I trust you over what I read on the internet. Because I was researching what? DDT. No, no, no. I was researching DDT and its effect on malaria and how the DDT ban pretty much allowed for malaria to start killing 50 million people over 30 years. And um, I read the the symptoms of malaria and I caught myself being <laughs> like, oh, I might, I might have. Yeah, anything on the internet is going to be like I that. know. So that's why I trust you over myself. Even when I'm reading, what's the symptoms of this, that, the other thing? What could it be? What isn't it? You know, I, I trust you over me. I trust you over what, what the internet tells me. As far as as far as most healthcare stuff goes, like that thing on my hand, whatever the fuck this thing, I'm <laughs> falling apart. He has cancer of the hand. Has I had, there's like a little thing. I re- it's, it's got to like be a, these cysts. I swear, it feels like either a bone cyst or a bone spur or something. It's right on the inside of his middle, uh, the, middle the, finger at knuckle. the base of the knuckle, at the base of the knuckle yeah. on the inside of my hand. It's got to be a boxing related thing. I looked it up. And it's on your left hand. Yeah. So that's your main hand. No, no, that's my that's my power hand. Right. Because I box southpaw. Okay. I don't right. jab with my left hand. I, I cross and hook with my left hand. But crosses are generally more powerful because you have the, the turning of your <coughs> of your hips and stuff and, and so it's a lot more even though there's not as many impacts, they're more they tend to be more powerful on average than, than your average jab. So hmm. So it's got to be a boxing related thing. And I and no. I researched it and there are people that had been complaining about it and on boxing forums and they say, you know, the thing they'll have either go away over time or But it doesn't feel like it's like anti-inflammatories. It doesn't feel like it's something that's inflamed. It feels like bone. It's hard. So I've got cancer. Like really hard. So what you're saying is I've got cancer. Yes. That's that's fantastic. You have 6 months. You've been watching too much House. <laughs> no, House is like, you have 24 hours, but we don't know what the hell is wrong with you. Let's so try everything be, in the book and hope it works. And it's the same thing. It's, yeah. It, it, pr- patient presents with these issues. House initially tries to, to one-off it. To it's, it's this. Try this. And then, no, oh, the, oh shit, that made it worse. They have internal bleeding. They have internal bleeding. And then, okay, it's got to be this. Let's try this. No, they're stagnant. Let's try this. Holy shit, they're getting worse. And then... They're going to die, they're going to die, they're going to die. The house has this great it's, uh, like, revelation of, you know. And then, and, then they're, and then they're fine or something. Not, it was too late. Not a, Right. And it, the show is just, it's, it's good, but it's so stupidly it's, formulated. It's like the same thing with, you know. It's like a ballet. Same shit, different day kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And, it, it's, and I can't help but suspend my disbelief. When I'm watching the show, House would be in so much fucking debt. Oh, wait, debt? From all the people suing him <laughs> oh, yeah. for all the shit he does. Well, how that's what cavalier, he's got for. how fucking negligent he is when he's just, yeah, I'm sending in my patient for brain surgery. I'm going home. <laughs> oh, and hurts. I'm performing surgery while I'm on fucking Vicodin. Yep. And it, it no. Oh yeah, Cuddy, and they tried to explain it away in a narrative sense. Cuddy is like, "I took out a two hundred thousand or two million dollar insurance policy or something on you." Blah like, blah blah. It was like fifty thousand. No, no, that's that's. I thought it was fifty thousand. Yeah, that's 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 the medical cost of the first patient because they're gonna have to pay for house is gonna have to pay for the medical cost that he fucked up, mm-hmm. all the stupid things that he did, and I mean it's a it's a fun show. If you forget about all these things. And you're just into it, and you connect with the characters and stuff, and it it's hard hitting because you know when they start doing the stat thing and they got to do uh, what what are these things called compressions compressions on somebody. It's a good show, but it's just some of it. It just if you think about it for too long, you're like, oh man, that's a piece. Th- this show is a piece of shit now because if you think about it's totally unrealistic when you really think about it. Yeah. And, well, for me, I mean, you you probably like, oh yeah, that's what hospitals are like, and it's like no, <clears throat> like how all the doctors are somehow lab technicians, and they're like in the lab doing the shit, and it's like no, doctors don't do that. Doctors are kind of like house; they kind of sit in the office, they sign off on shit, they tell you what to do. <coughs> I thought you weren't a doctor. 
I'm not, but I have. I don't a know my my history of my time of ex- extended stay in the hospital was I was incredibly high on painkillers, so I couldn't tell you which what, what way it was. I mean, up. you'd probably see your doctor like once. They'd probably come in and say hi and whatever. Yeah, but the, you won't see. He him, performed like, the all chest the tube. He did the chest tube on me. The doctor, yeah, himself, yeah, the black guy. I of think. course, that would be his. What? Why would you need to bring that up? Because doctor. because I was so high on painkillers that I had to differentiate people by things about them. Like okay. I knew he was black. I don't. I couldn't. I couldn't pick him out of a lineup, but I knew he was black. I knew my nurse was like an albino, but I was so high. Apparently, she had like horrible acne problems, and I never noticed. Hmm. Nice. So I had but to like, differentiate people. The part in house where there's like house right, and the other three are doctors. You know, um, well, they're all doctors, right? Chase and Foreman and what's her name, Cameron? Right. Yeah, they're 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 all doctors, Mm -hmm. but House is the one that's in charge. You probably met one of the three doctors. That's probably who that guy was. But the main doctor. Oh, so you're saying there was so you're saying there was a house lurking or somewhere around? Well, not like like House, but there was a no. I choose to believe. I I choose to believe that it was House. No. I don't diagnose. think I would want to meet House. He's a dick. No, I think I, I think I could win House over. I'd have him on the show. No. I'd do my show from the hospital room. No. And he would respect my intellect. He would initially he would initially scoff at me. No, he but wouldn't. then there would be a revelation scene where I help diagnose myself and then he comes to respect me. You would diagnose yourself. I would help. Like I would say I would remember a symptom. Or do something. I would help House jog his memory. Yeah, but then House would be like, why didn't you say that first time, you stupid? That's what he'd be like, because that's just House. It's just how he is. No, or, or I'd remember everyone. something Foreman or Chase did. I'd be like, <laughs> they did this. And then he'd be like, then he'd get mad at them. And he'd look at me as, you know, you, no. I like you. No, 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 I don't think House would. You know what? I, I choose He's to. just too much into himself. <sighs> I think you'd make a great guest. <laughs> Make a great guess on the show. I do it from the from the hospital bed with my tablet. And this, you just be popping pills all the time. Yeah, fuck it. I don't care. There's no FCC on the internet. No FCC broadcast regulations on the internet that I'm aware of, except for the whole you know child porn stuff. But Anyways, so yeah, you have hand cancer. I have hand cancer. Yeah, hand cancer, gray hairs, and apparently not allowed to buy ritzier electronics than I buy nope. as as gifts. Not like so recently after I get mine. So, like you so got you're it, saying, like, here's the thing. Let's scale it up. Let's scale this problem up. What you are saying is that if for your birthday, now, let's say I hit it big mm-hmm. in podcasting on YouTube, PKA plays as a hit, hundreds of thousands of views of video. They're 30 minutes long. They monetize to the fucking moon, right? And I'm a hit and I got gobs of money. I got so much fucking money with nothing to spend it on. Yeah, and, everything to spend it on. And I buy you a car for your birthday. Mm-hmm. A brand new car. Let's say it costs 25 grand, 30 grand. I, you're saying then that I cannot then go out and buy myself a BMW. Or what, an wait, what kind of car? I what don't, kind of car is my 30 grand car? That depends. A brand new Hyundai. What's the, what's the one you want? You're looking at? I Sonata? Would, the Sonatas, yeah, those are nice. Which one's the bigger one, not the small one? The Sonata. A brand new Hyundai Sonata with the interior you like. We go to a dealer. It's a, we make a day of it. We go to the dealership. I've got the I've got the check, and you go through. You pick out. You pick out swatches. You pick out the color. You pick out all the with all the bells and whistles, all the accessories. You mm-hmm. get a brand new one shipped to you from the factory. That's your birthday present. Mm-hmm. You are then saying that I would be in the wrong. For a month later, when I get paid, going out and getting myself an Infiniti G35 with all the bells and whistles, or an Audi A6, or whatever, okay. with all the with all no the really nice stuff. No one's saying you're being a bad guy. I didn't say you. Were but you're being saying a that would be guy. wrong. I didn't. Or you wouldn't say like that it. You would be, it would just be, happy. be like it would feel like you were just pooping on my present. Like you're just like. <laughs> but yeah. your present was a god. How does how does what I have devalue what you have? That that's what you're saying is that no, somehow, it's just the idea of it that it's just like okay, I'm going to buy you this, 
But then not too long after, I'm going to buy myself something really nice and shiny. Right. And the reason is because you see the disparity in the items, which means you're thinking on some level, why couldn't I have something at that level when I got my present? Mm -hmm. Which means inherently you are not happy with what you have. No, it's the idea of Mm. that you would do it. Because in my sense, if I were to get you a present, I would want to get you what I would get myself. I'm raising.com, ladies and gentlemen. Great place to go for crowdsourcing stuff. You want to help out the Lefty Show, get us on iTunes. Keep us on iTunes. You want to help out with uh, with studio costs. You want to, I don't know, get Katie a better I, a better tablet than I oh, have I so that it, have then I can buy myself a nice one too. So we're going to need two tablets. No. Samsung, get on it. Now I just want a car. Now you just want a car. Great. Yeah. I really need a car. Shouldn't Ryan. have brought that up. You don't need a car. Anyway. Yes, I do. I'm raising.com forward slash 643 productions. If you want to donate to help out the cause, it's a great place to do it. and uh, Or that's the only place to do it. And uh, help get us on iTunes. Keep us uh, keep us free. And uh, and keep us rolling. I think we'll wrap up the lefty show there. Siete de Mayo, I believe, has a... Uh, Siete de Mayo. Siete de Mayo. Yeah, that's how I <laughs> intro the show. So um, Katie and I are going to head out, probably uh, go get into a fight at Sam's Club with the door lady checking receipts. I am not going to Sam's Club with you. Why not? Oh, okay. I'm not we're doing we're it. We're going to discuss this. We are going to discuss this after the show. Thank you, Katie, for joining the show. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. Anytime. Love you, sweetie. Love you, too. Thank you guys for joining. We hope you enjoyed. We'll see you hopefully tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. We'll see. Thank you guys for joining. We hope you enjoyed. We're out. Peace.